know it's true. I dropped out of high school at 17 and made a quarter of a million dollars. Wow, deputy, deputy. Okay, so first things first, if you're new to the channel, do me a quick favor, hit the subscribe button, that way you can join the best family on YouTube, and also while you're at it, make sure you hit the post bell notification, that way when we upload, you can keep it litty with us and you never miss a video, yeah! Okay guys, so you saw the title, you saw the thumbnail, no clickbait, um, this is real, uh, I decided to, you know, I've been reaching out to you guys on social media platforms, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and you guys wanted a true lifetime story because you wanted to know more about Jersey Tay. And I thought that was awesome. I did promise you guys, I told you that if you stay rocking with the Dream Team, uh, more content would be, uh, you know, revealed, whether it be vlogs, whether it be mukbangs, or whether it be um, just a day in the life of. And I feel like, you know, for the OGs, you guys have been rocking with me ever since we started. And even the newcomers, you guys are really in tune with who I am in my life. And I appreciate you guys more than anything. So I figured like, you know, you guys are my family, you know, I love all of you. And, you know, just to be honest with you, share your story. And hopefully I can motivate and inspire some of you to even do better. But yeah, you saw the title, you saw the thumbnail. This is not clickbait. This is real. It's a real story. And um, I, I kind of don't know how to begin it, but let's just get straight into it. We're just gonna chill. I'm gonna try to keep this as raw as authentic as possible. Minimal cuts, minimal edits. Um, yeah, but it's just my heart to yours. So um, yeah, so yeah, it is true. Um, at the age of 17, I dropped out of high school. Um, I stopped going to school. I, I quit school, I didn't go back. And um, that was probably the best decision I think I have ever made in my life. Um, and here's why. It all started back in elementary school. Um, when I was a kid, uh, I would have to wake up. And for those of you that don't know, I'm the oldest of three, so I have a, uh, two sisters. Um, I would have to wake up at around like five o'clock in the morning um, to get ready to go to school. Now school didn't start until like seven o'clock, maybe eight o'clock, but one, I'm not a morning person. I hate the mornings. Um, so that just ruined my, my day from the beginning. And two, it takes a long time for me to get out of bed um, at that time again. So my mom would wake us up at like five o'clock in the morning um, and she would allow me to stay in bed for like an extra hour just so I can get up. And then by 6.30, I was ready. Seven o'clock, we, we, you know, my sister and I, we'd be on the bus and then we'd be at school and get ready for school at eight o'clock. Well, I hated school so much that I felt like giving up even at an early age, at an early grade, you know, fifth grade in elementary school. And this pattern continued throughout my life. Um, and it wasn't necessarily until I got older until I found out that I didn't hate school. I just hate the process of getting ready for school. It just made things so difficult for me. And I hated waking up that early. So um, as time passed on, you know, I'm now in middle school and my teachers are starting to notice a pattern. My mom, my parents are starting to notice a pattern that I'm feeling sluggish. Uh, I'm not really into school. My grades are slipping and I'm not really doing well. There's no effort. And I'm talking about dropping out of school. Like I'm talking about dropping out of school in the seventh grade, like quitting school. You know, that was a red flag. And uh, my teachers and my parents, they always said, if you know, it's weird. I was a weird kid because um, if I didn't put in any kind of work or hard work into, you know, school or anything, I was still a C plus B minus student. That's weird. Like I would I wouldn't even put 100 percent of my effort or work into my schoolwork, but I would still come out a C plus or a B minus. So you can only imagine that if I actually put in the work, I could have, I could have easily been an A student. Well, um, one of the, one of my most like life changing experiences uh, going into school was I was in the seventh grade and um, everybody in class was I was a quiet kid. I I know it sounds weird because you know you think of like Jersey Tay, you do YouTube and you're so energetic, you're so positive, and you know you seem like you talk. And it, that's true, that's true. But I was always a shy kid. 
And even now, like I'm very reserved. I'm not the guy who speaks out. Um, I say to myself, I'm super quiet, super shy at times too. And um, I'm just a good conversationalist. But yeah, so I'm the quiet kid in, in school. I, never, I just did my work. I didn't really talk to anybody. And you know, I sat at the lunch table by myself. I sat at school by myself. I did everything by myself, you know? Um, well, there was talk around the school about, you know, obviously I would talk to friends and things like that. And there was talk around the school, my school was saying that I hated school and I wanted to drop out. Well, it got around to the school and it got around to the teachers. And my teachers noticed a, a drastic change in my behavior. I wasn't doing my homework. I wasn't doing schoolwork. Um, I was leaving school early or sometimes I wasn't showing up. I was quiet and I wasn't putting in any work um, into my, my schoolwork. It was just, I was lazy, you know? But what they didn't understand was how could I be so lazy but still come out a C plus student? I'm a B minus student, you know, worst case. But yeah, so I remember being in class and I was sitting down just like the rest of the students and class was usually around 45 minutes to an hour long. Well, um, 10 minutes before class ended, my teacher, one of my teachers, had looked at me and said, hey, do you mind staying after school? Or, or do you mind staying after class for like 10 minutes? I need help with something. And I was like, yeah, sure, no problem, you know? Well, guys, I kid you not, um, the bell had rang to go to the next class. And at that time, I was literally taking my school supplies and placing them on my bed or inside my bag because we sat at desks and we were allowed to bring our bags, our backpacks into, into class. And we would just, you know, hang them on the back of the chair. So I took my book, uh, my bag, my backpack, and I took all my school supplies and I placed them inside of my backpack. And that was all like 10 to seven seconds, or I'm sorry, <laughs> seven to 10 seconds. Like I was just placing them in my backpack, you know? And within seven to 10 seconds, when I placed all my items inside my bag, after the bell had rang, when I looked up, I had six teachers in front of me that were just standing there like they were in the military with a notebook and a pen. And they were all standing at the front door and all the kids had left class. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? Like, what's going on? What did I do? What's going on? The teachers had closed the door and they sat down with me and they said, hey, what's going on with you? Are you having problems at home? Are you are like, are you depressed? Do you have a, a medical condition? Like, are you having personal problems? What is this talk about you wanting to quit school and not go to school and not do the work? I was the type of kid that mentored other kids um, in the class. You know, you always have those class clowns, the, the kid who didn't really know how to do the work, that one kid who was just bad and didn't do work at all. Then you had that one kid who didn't perform exceptionally well in class, but they were afraid to ask for help because they didn't want to seem stupid. I would, uh, or dumb or not smart. I would mentor those kids in class. I would partner up with them and I would get them to do their work. I wouldn't let them like do, I wouldn't do the work for them. I would teach them. And my teachers saw that and they loved that in me. I was a mentor for those kids. And uh, they saw it at an early age that I was somebody who wanted to make a difference in life you know, and I, I wanted to bring happiness to everyone. Um, but what they didn't understand is why didn't I want to bring happiness to my life? Why wasn't I as motivated to work on my life as I was with someone else's? And um, that was tough for them. So uh, they sat down and like, we all sat down at this table in a huge circle and the teachers were writing down information and they said, why do you want to drop out? Um, you're in the seventh grade, you have a long life ahead of you. Like, you're not gonna be anything if you drop out. Um, you know, life doesn't go anywhere. After you drop out, you don't have an education. You can't do anything with your life. You're gonna be broke, poor, and like homeless. You know what I mean, pretty much. And I had told them, you know, I just didn't like waking up so early. I'm not a morning person. My teachers loved me so much. They were like, well, we can put you in the library and you know, you don't have to be here in class. We'll do anything to keep you in school. You know, we'll give you assignments. We'll send you to the library and you can stay there all day. You can go to lunch with any class you like. And, you know, as long as that's gonna keep you in school, we could do that. So I actually, you know, they did that. They gave me all my assignments and they sent me to the library. After I was done with the work, I was able to get on the computers and do whatever I want. 
just, I was a free kid, you know? I just, they just wanted to keep me in school. And that was like one of the incidents that happened and I was like, okay, well, let's see where that goes. Well, you know, I get into high school and, you know, a couple years later after, after middle school, my life is starting to go downhill again. Um, for those of you that don't know, like I said, I'm the oldest of three. Uh, my parents were divorced. My parents started to divorce uh, when I was in high school. So that caused problems at home. Um, it just, the foundation of being a, a well-structured family was just kind of like falling apart. And um, I didn't take it really well being the only guy. Um, my dad kind of just left. He didn't really play that role into the life anymore just because he was so heartbroken. Like my parents were together for like 24 years, 25 and playing that role. Like he just, he didn't know anybody else. You know, he was heartbroken. He didn't know another woman. He didn't want to be with another woman. And um, he felt like the only way he could heal was by running away. And um, he left, you know? And uh, I didn't really care for me because I knew I'd be okay. I cared more so for my sisters because statistics show that for women, when they don't have a father figure in their life, life for them goes downhill. And they were my pride and joy, you know? So I love, I love them. And um, it, it did cause a, a disturbance, not only emotionally, but mentally and at home too, personally. Um, so around this time, I'm maybe like a, I would say the issue occurred roughly around my, my sophomore, junior year of high school. And um, I was 17. I was 17 years old and um, I would literally hate it. I would wake up six o'clock in the morning again to get ready for school because once again, I'm that kid who, who can't get up and I hate the mornings and I hate school. I hate the process and getting ready for school. And, um, you know, finally the days start to drag by, the years going by and I slowly but surely start to become, um, I guess like I'm not motivated anymore. I'm drained, you know, my parents are divorcing. There's problems at home and I can't focus. And it gets to the point to where I'm waking up and my parents, we're waking up at six o'clock in the morning, seven o'clock in the morning to get ready for school. And my parents are fighting, you know? And I'm like, Jesus Christ, is it ever going to end? I look at my sister and she looks at me and she's like, I just wish they would break up right now, you know? Um, can they just end it? Because it was literally ongoing. And then eight hours later, six hours later, when we get out of school, we get off the bus and they're arguing again. So that caused a lot of um, emotional distress and mental distress to not only me, but um, my family as well. So we, we, weren't, we weren't stable and I wasn't stable. Um, I, I just didn't know what to do with life at that point, you know? Um, I was just becoming another statistic, you know? I'm a black kid, you know, that at the time, you know, and I'm dropping out of school. I don't have a father anymore. My parents are, aren't together. I'm coming from a broken family. So statistics show that being black and then being, you know, fatherless, you know, you don't make it in life. You don't make it. And um, you're not going to go too far in life. And one of the things that I hated was that I hated being a statistic. I didn't want to be that black, that typical black, that stereotype and stereotypical black statistic of being fatherless and a broken home and then not educated and poor and things like that. I wanted to beat the statistic. So um, I thought I was going to do it, but then I ended up becoming the statistic. So finally, I meet this girl in high school and, um, you know, I wasn't allowed to date. I wasn't allowed to date. My parents didn't let me have a girlfriend. Um, it was, I had to focus on schoolwork and I had to do sports. I wasn't, a, I legit wasn't allowed to have a girlfriend. I couldn't date. We'll, we'll see how that works out. And um, I ended up being attracted to this girl and we dated for like five or six months. Um, during the school year, she ended up moving and transferring to a different school and she moved two hours away. I was heartbroken and like, oh my God, like I'm, I'm never gonna see you again and things like that. And um, I was just like, wow, okay. What am I gonna do with life now? Like my life ended. And I was so dramatic. I was an emotional kid, you know, I was an emotional kid. If I, if something made me sad, it made me sad. If I was happy about something, I was happy. If I was mad, I was mad, you know, emotional. There was no in between. And um, that kind of that kind of hurt me. So finally, you know, to speed things up a little bit, um, it gets to around the point to where it's Thanksgiving and we get a break. You know, in high school, you get like Thanksgiving break, you get Christmas break, and things like that. 
And um, for Thanksgiving break, I actually went to go visit her two hours away and her family. And at that point, um, I started to notice that I, I wasn't paying attention in school, you know, because I was so focused on her, missing her and not being with her and things like that, that after Thanksgiving break, you know, when that ended, I never went back to school. I never went back to school. Now, mind you, earlier, I'm 17 at this point, and I'm a, I'm, I'm a junior. I'm a junior in high school. Um, I was actually doing so well in high school, in high school years, you know, despite me having a lack of motivation and not wanting to be in school, but I was eligible to graduate with the seniors. So I graduate, I would have graduated at 17 with the seniors being a junior. Um, like that's how crazy it was, but uh, that didn't work out. So after Thanksgiving break and I had visited her, I stopped going to school. I never went back to school. Um, and being a minor, it's kind of illegal. You can't do that. You know, your, your parents get in trouble for a kid that's not going to school. You know, they check up on you. Um, they send authorities and it's like, what's going on? Like your kid is still a minor. Well, I, I think after that break, um, after visiting her, I think I had missed like, uh, I would say roughly two to three weeks of school after that consecutively. Um, I didn't show up. And then finally one day I go back and everybody looks at me and they're like, oh my God, you know, well, I, I wait that whole day and then I talk to my counselor and I tell my counselor like, hey, I want to drop out. And uh, my counselor loved me. Um, she knew, uh, she believed in me since day one. She knew the struggles that I was going through with emotionally, you know, mentally, and even in my personal life, she knew everything. And when I told her I wanted to drop out, her response was, what the hell are you talking about? Are you stupid? Are you serious? And um, she had shut the door and she spoke with me for like two hours. And um, she had, she just asked me, she said, listen, can you promise to come to school for a month straight? If you don't like school within that month straight, um, you could drop out. She said, I'll give you the form. You have to have your parents sign it and you could drop out. And she said, I don't want you to. She was like, but you know, at the end of the day, I can't, I, I can't control that, you know? And she was coming up with options. She was like, what about school that you don't like? Do you not like being here? She said, if so, you know, we can have you here for like two hours just for the morning. And then we can send you back home and then we can give you the paperwork, you know, your schoolwork from the teachers. She said, we could do that until you graduate. She said, I want you to graduate with the seniors. And I was like, I was just hard headed. I hated school. I said, no, I just want to grad. I mean, I just want to drop out. I don't want to do the work. I don't want to be here. She came up with every solution possible. She said, okay, what if you just wake up, you check into class and then you go home and you could do the work. Or what if you stay here until lunchtime and then you can leave at lunchtime and then you can go to a library, turn in the work online and then you don't have to worry about being at school. Or what if you're, you're homeschooled? Like, what if we just send you the work there and you could just email it to us? To us. My, my counselor was amazing. She tried to do everything to keep me there. But just spiritually, emotionally, I wasn't in the right place dealing with the breakup, the, you know, my love and then um, personal life. I just wanted to stop school. And um, she cried, she cried, she cried. And then um, I went to school consecutively for a month. And uh, I had decided that I was going to drop out. Um, I had went to my mom and I had told her, I said, hey, listen, I need to talk to you. And she said, what about, I said, I don't like school, I hate school. And I had a real heart to heart conversation with my mom. My mom and I never really had the best relationship because me being the only boy, um, and after my dad kind of leaving us, she was more, I didn't realize it until I got older, but she was stuck playing a tough role. She was like, how do I teach a, a boy to be a man, you know? And how do I teach him that I'm his mom at the same time? Um, she was stuck in between that, you know? There was no structure, there was no foundation for me to kind of, and I wasn't a rebellious kid, but you know, it, there was no structure. And she had to choose whether playing the role as mom or whether she would play the role as my best friend. And it's to some of you that may sound weird and it might not make sense, but it was tough for my mom being a single mom. And um, she chose to play my best friend instead of my mom role. And um, you know, I'm always grateful for that because I think I turned out just fine. And I think I turned out the man I am because she played that best friend role. Um, it pretty much, she saved my life in, in other sense, in other words. Um, 
And she said, what about? You know, and we talked and I said, I can't do school anymore. I don't like it. I don't want to be there. I hate it. I'm not learning anything. I don't need it. It's stupid. They don't teach me anything. And she cried and she cried and she said, well, what do you want to do? I said, tomorrow I want to go to school and then I want to drop out. And um, she cried and she cried and she's like, I can't believe it. She, uh, she was like, you have a bright future. You could be so much more. You could be greater than, you know, that black statistic and things like that. And I said, I know, but I don't want to do it anymore. I quit. I give up. And um, the next day uh, I showed up and I had, you know, I went to school and I spoke to my counselor and I said, I'm dropping out. And my counselor cried and my counselor cried and she brought all my teachers in and um, they tried to talk to me and get me to stay. And um, I just looked and I said, listen, I don't want to do school. I don't want to hear it. I just want to drop out. And they said, wow. They said, you have the potential to be one of the greatest people in the world and you have a bright future. You really do. She's like, if only you would just apply yourself and uh, keep working, keep working. And I listened and I said, yeah, I know. So I, I wasn't able to sign the papers by myself because I was a minor. So I called my mom in, you know, I gave my mom a call. And I said, hey, can you come in? I need you to sign the papers. And my counselor cried and everybody cried. And you know, they said, we're gonna miss you. And we wish you the best of luck in whatever it is that you're gonna do. They said, you're gonna be something great. You're gonna do something amazing for the world. And you always talked about making changes. And they said, I, I know it. Just one day I'm going to see you on TV and I'm going to know that you made a change in the world. And I said, thank you, I appreciate it. I signed the dotted line, my mom signed as well, and they handed me my transcripts and I, I dropped out at 17 years old. Um, two, maybe two or three months after I had dropped out, I, I didn't know what to do with my life. I was lost. I was up early playing video games and not really doing anything with life. I wasn't motivated or anything like that. And then um, I had noticed that all my friends were graduating and they were going to college and it just seemed right. So two months after I had graduated, or two months after I had dropped out, um, I decided to go back to school. Yeah, I, I decided to go back to school and um, I ended up still in time enough to graduate with the seniors. So uh, I got back into school and I graduated early at 17. Uh, with the seniors, so I was able to graduate and get my high school diploma. And immediately after I did that, I I went straight into college where I got my associate's degree in arts and graphics, and then I decided to take a year or two off and, um, you know, uh, just kind of work on myself. From there, I, didn't, I really didn't know what to do, and I decided to fly to California. I just woke up one day and I flew to California. And I flew to California and I had just one goal and one goal in mind and that was to, you know, be the best person that I can be. And I wanted to make it in life. I wanted to be something in life. So I flew to California and then uh, I decided to get back into school. I went to school and um, that's where YouTube came into play. Um, I didn't, I ended up graduating and I, I got my bachelor's and I didn't know what to do with life. And, during the time that I'm in college, I'm, I'm creating my, my clothing brand, Dream, and then I'm also trying to create um, this this channel. Like, what do I want to do with life? How do I want to produce it? What can I do? Where's the platform? How can I use it? So I decided to get my things together and I did my research and I figured out what YouTube was, how it worked, and you know how I could be a part of it. So in 20, 2015, I decided to, you know, actually sit down and prepare. I sketched out my YouTube channel, um, the display, how it would look. I sketched out like the design arts and what I would use and what my brand would be called. And I came up with the best thing ever. And it was do right even after mistakes. Do right even after mistakes means more to me. And um, I don't think you guys understand it because like that was probably, you know, um, at the time, like I said, I don't regret dropping out of high school because it was the best thing that happened for me. It made me realize so much, but also at the same time, it was like one of the biggest mistakes in my life too, because my life could have went downhill. So um, all the mistakes in my life, I, I managed to correct them by doing better. And that's what I tried to get you guys to understand. Do right even after mistakes. 
once you make a mistake, that's okay. It's a life lesson. You know, you learn from it. But I need you to continue pushing and moving forward in life because it doesn't stop there no matter what happens. So when I created the brand and I gave it its meaning, I decided to take it up a notch and I decided to implement everything I wanted to happen. I knew what I was going to do and I knew what was going to happen and how I wanted to get started. So I, I, I knew all my influencers and things like that. Um, and a lot of you always ask like, well, how did you start the YouTube channel and what made you want to start it? Well, I wasn't doing good financially after school. Like, you know, you're a college student, you're broke as hell, you don't really have any money. So I always wanted to produce too. And I always wanted to, you know, be an actor and be in Marvel movies and things like that. And there was just something about being a superhero or making change and impact that I wanted to do. So um this is where it gets like juicy too so a lot of people ask well how did you start youtube and um you know how much money do you make from youtube well to be honest when i started youtube my favorite youtuber is ryan higa um yeah ryan higa he's my favorite youtuber uh ever 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 on the platform and then we have a few others like Corey kenshin and then you know you you just have your other youtubers as well but the end the youtuber that influenced me to actually begin youtube it's gonna be a shocker, and I don't think you guys would ever know, but um, he, he's pretty much inspired a lot of people to do YouTube too, despite him being in and out and the controversy. But um, was FusiTube, was Yusuf Erdekat. Like, he, he inspired me to do YouTube, and it was back in 2016 when I picked up my channel and I decided to take off. Um, long story short, if you guys remember, Fusi went on a, a tour called Fusi versus Roman Atwood tour. And um, I'll never forget it. Fusi always talked about um, the law of attraction, how he believed into it, or how he believed in the law of attraction. Everything he spoke, he spoke into an existence. He said he wanted this, he would get this a year later. He said he wanted that, he would get it months later. Everything he spoke, he spoke into an existence and he would have and obtain it. That inspired me so much. I'll never forget it, guys. I used to stay up until like three o'clock in the morning waiting for him to drop vlogs waiting for him to post again. And um, I'll never forget, he, it was the Roman versus, it was the Fusi versus Roman Atwood uh, tour. They went, they went to Scotland. Well, when he went to Scotland, he ended up meeting a, a big time fan of his. And if they, I think the video is actually still up on his channel, you should check it out because it inspired me. But he inspired the kid to believe in the law of attraction. And if I remember correctly, the kid said he, he wrote three things on a piece of paper and he, I think he thumbtacked it to his wall. And one of the things that he said that uh, he wanted to accomplish was he wanted to meet Fusi and have a real life conversation with him, invite him over to dinner and eat with his family and have Fusi drive in his dad's cars. Now, prior to him meeting Fusi that year, it was a year before he met Fusi when he wrote that. So Fusi went on that tour in Scotland, I think in 2016, the kid had wrote this law of attraction back in 2015. And um, it just happened so coincidentally that a year later to uh, Fusi went to Scotland to meet the, or he went to Scotland and then the kid ended up meeting him. Well, the kid met him and he did exactly what he said he wanted to do. He drove around in uh, his dad's cars. He Fusi ate with his family. He met the kid, so that inspired me. It was like 4.30 in the morning when I wrote that. And I grabbed a little board about this big and about that wide. It was a whiteboard and I it was a magnet and I put it on my refrigerator. And I had three goals. And I said, the goal was to start a YouTube channel and have 1,000 subscribers 1,000 by January 1st. If you guys remember, I started my we started our YouTube channel, I think in August or September of 2016. I said, if I didn't have 1,000 subscribers by January 1st, I would quit. I wouldn't continue with YouTube and I would find something in my career or continue being a personal fitness trainer. And um, I, if you guys don't know too, I'm also a Christian and I spoke with God and I, and I asked him, I said, God, whatever it is that you have planned for me, I just ask that you keep me protected at all times. And I said, I don't ask you for much, but I'm just asking you to keep me protected and show me that the love that you have for me is real. Just help me keep my faith 
and trust the process and understand you. I'm not asking for much and I don't ask for much in life. I said, but just give me the answers to everything that I want. And I know you guys are like, well, what's the purpose that doesn't work? I was like, no, give me the answers. If you give me the answer, I can create the equation to that problem or to that solution, I guess. For example, you know, if I ask you to give me two numbers that equal the sum of four, you're gonna take the easy route and you're gonna say two plus two, right? But there's many ways that you can equal four. Five minus one, three plus one, four plus zero, you know, whatever the case may be, eight divided by two, there's always a solution that can give you the answer at four. So there's many solutions, but I told God, I said, just give me the answer that I need. If I can continue with this YouTube journey, give me the answers. Just let me create the equation. I can make it happen. That answer, I can make it fit. I can make the equation fit that answer. I don't know how, but I trust you enough to allow me to create that equation and let me let me let me get the answer. Um, once again, we started YouTube in September, and uh, by by December twenty fourth of twenty sixteen, so October, November, December, in three months, in three months we had gained 2,500 subscribers. I had already passed my milestone of 1,000 subscribers by 1,500. Um, and he gave me the answer. And I knew from there I was gonna be able to do it. And I asked him, I said, you've, you've proven to me that I, you know, that with faith you protected me, you allowed me to continue this journey. I know I'm meant for this. Now show me how can I change the world with this? And it just, things started to talk to me. Um, you know, I started to grow at a, at a rapid, at a rapid pace for a small channel. People started noticing me outside of like, you know, in the outside world, I was going out to the mall, I was going out to eat and people were taking pictures and they wanted autographs and, you know, they were crying and they were doing this. And he gave me this, all of this. And he said, I gave you the answer, you know, now just create the equation. How are you going to deal with it? And I just told him, I said, I want to make the world smile. And he gave me answers and I started creating equations. Um, within our first year of YouTube, I made a quarter of a million dollars. No clickbait. That number, I made a quarter of a million dollars through brand deals, through, through sponsors, through YouTube, Google AdSense, like we made a quarter of a million dollars. And here's the thing, with that quarter of a million dollars, till this day, it's been three years since we started YouTube, I have not spent one penny on myself. Not one penny. I haven't used any of that money to benefit me never bought anything for myself. I made a promise to him, God, and I said, if you show me the way, if you show me the answers and you show me that I can do it, I promise I'm going to change the world the best way that I can. And my goal was to create a brand, to be on YouTube, to make a difference in the world. And God allowed me to do every single one of these things without, without any help. He kept me protected and he said, I gave you the answers and I'm allowing you to do whatever it is that you want. You know, just promise you won't let me down. And I, I kept a promise and I told him, you know, I'm not going to let you down. I'm going to do whatever it takes to change the world. You gave me what I want and I worked hard for it. Now I'm going to give you, now it's my way to say thank you. You kept me protected. You gave me everything I want, whether it was from brand deals, whether it was creating my own brand, a YouTube channel, changing the world, these these beautiful dreamers, how do I say thank you? And the benefit of that, uh, of doing all of this was money. It was a reward. Um, yeah, you know, I'm happy with how I'm living and I'm happy with what I've been blessed with. But at the same time, it's like, that's not what I use this gift for. I didn't use this gift to be famous and buy materialistic things because I didn't have it growing up. I don't need it now. It doesn't, it doesn't do anything for me. My thing is I wanted to change the world since I was six years old, you know? I wanted to make the world smile and I wanted to spread love and positivity and that's what I try to do with every video. 
and he protected me and he allowed me to do everything I wanted to do. And I'm still able to do it three years later. Um, and we've been on YouTube. A quarter of a million dollars and I haven't spent a single penny on me. Everything we have ever earned went straight to you guys. I never invested the money into the channel. We have did everything for you guys. And you guys have given me this platform because without you guys, I don't exist. And without you guys, the dream team doesn't begin to exist. So that's why I always say I thank you and I love you, really from the bottom of my heart. Um, we've donated to charities. Um, I think back in 2017, when Houston had that, I think was it a flood? Or was it, was it a hurricane? I can't remember, but Houston was struck. Um, you know, it was a uh, devastating um, event that had happened and uh, we had raised, I wanna say anywhere from, I can't remember the exact number, but I think it was, I think we raised 10 to like $20,000 for Houston. And then we donated together um, an additional $5,000 to help Houston out. Uh, when Puerto Rico had that that thing as well, because you guys know I'm Puerto Rican, I'm Hawaiian, Black, and Puerto Rican. Um, for those of you that don't know, yes, I'm Puerto Rican, yes, I'm Hawaiian, yes, I'm Black. Um, so Puerto Rico had that whole thing too, and then we raised money to help them, and then we donated money, you know, in our name for them as well too. Also, like, you know, I do iPhone giveaways, and I do cash app prizes giveaways, and, um, I just do these random things because you guys did it for me. You know, you saved my life, you made my life happier, and you're the reason why I'm, I'm here today on this platform, why I exist. So um, I love you guys and thank you so much. You know, you guys, I've, I've been able to open up to you guys and I have never been judged. I've been able to tell you guys my side of the story and it's been nothing but love. So I thank you guys for that. and. Uh, you know, you guys mean the world to me, so I love you more than life itself. And you know, that's that's kind of Drizzy Tay in a bottle. You know what I mean? That's just a little portion of my life um, that I was able to open up with you guys because I feel comfortable and I feel like I'm not going to be judged. So, you know, um, I the whole point of me telling you guys that was like that's a true story. You know, I did drop out at 17, but I saw so much and I kept pushing and I I, I got my degree and. Um, I made something of myself, even despite the odds being a statistic or having people doubt me and not really having that, that, that father figure, you know, I'm just like you guys, you know, I'm telling you guys, I tell you guys all the time, I'm you guys for every single person that watches, that subscribe to our channel, that watches me, I'm you guys. I'm just, I'm you, I'm you. That's it. There's no difference. I'm you. You like music, I like music. You've been hurt, I've been hurt. I'm just the face of this channel. It's your channel, I'm just the face of it. Um, the reason why you guys subscribe is because you can relate to me in some form of way. You only like something, you only follow somebody because you can relate to them. There's something about that person that you like that's relatable. And that's why I tell you guys, I'm you guys. I'm that harmonizer, I'm that mixer, I'm that, you know, that that Blink fan, that Pentaholic. I'm that, the, I'm the black kid, I'm the Hispanic kid, you know, I'm the minority, I'm the positive person, I'm the person who helps people, who likes to make people smile, you know, I have dreams, I'm ambitious, I'm, I fight a lot, you know, for everything that I want in life. I'm a fitness freak, you know, I, I'm into adventures. I'm you, I'm you, I'm every single one of you that subscribe to the channel. You know, so I like I said, I, I can't thank you guys more than enough. So hopefully, you know, that story kind of inspired you guys to let you know that you're not alone. Like, you know, we are relatable and there is somebody out there that's just like you that went through everything you went through and they made it out. You know what I mean? So um, trust me, you can make it out and you can fight. I just need you to stay consistent. I need you to continue to believe in yourself and, you know, keep faith and you can make it. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's that's pretty much Drizzy Tay in, in somewhat of a of a nutshell and a bottle. Um, guys, that's pretty much just the end of the video. Thank you for allowing me to open up to you guys and uh, you didn't judge me. So I love you guys more than anything and I know the video is pretty long. So like I said, minimal edits, minimal cuts. That's all you. Thank you guys so much. Uh, we do have more uploads coming up to the video. So no worries, We're gonna I'm gonna release those bangers right after I release this. I love you guys more than anything. Um, 
yeah, that's pretty much it. You guys, you know, I can't do this up on here, so I need you guys to see this, and I'll meet you in the next episode. But I'm out of here. <laughs> I love you. Sheesh.